The first technique I teach on my orange belt list is deceptive gift. This is a defense against a dishonorable handshake. And there's really kind of two kinds of the dishonorable handshake. And obviously, you know, you could have variations of these. But I sort of separate this into one is the guy who's trying to put the crush on you, or what I might call the intimidator. This is somebody who's trying to sort of physically dominate you by giving you a handshake that's unnecessarily powerful. Maybe they're trying to crush your hand. Maybe they're trying to crush your fingertips out there. And they're not letting go. This is, he's kind of being a jerk. Right? And the other version is the guy who's trying to isolate your arm and pull it down so that he can hit you with his offhand. And at that point, it's really our base 1A sparring technique that we teach in Kempo, where he's, it's, he's doing the pull-down check, he's pulling your arm down and across to cancel your height, width, and depth, and he's striking high with his offhand. And of course, he could be striking low, he could be doing a lot of different things, maybe he's going to stab you, right? But the idea is either it's sort of the level 1 version where he's just kind of being a jerk and you want to get out of that, or it's the level 11 version where it's an initiation of an assault. And this is an opportunity for us to have that voluming conversation again. And we're going to continue to have this conversation throughout the students' training. Even once they're black belts, we're going to revisit these basic conversations all the time. Because it's important to keep those things fresh in the minds of your students and in yourself, right? We're not just teaching people to crush throats and crush testicles. We want people to become martial artists. And that's the difference in my mind between a thug and a martial artist. Both of them can hurt you. The thug is just a brute. The martial artist understands what he's doing and why. And he can change how he reacts to the situation consciously based on his training. Okay? So we teach this. It really, you can use the technique off of either, but because we're going to go into a striking counter-offensive combination, we're assuming this is an attack. This isn't just somebody who's, you know, kind of being an intimidating salesman or something, or somebody, you know, at the company board meeting who's just being a jerk. It's not Ted from accounting, right? This is somebody who's planning to hit you, and that's going to be part of our defense as we moved into it. So the guy's holding us. Now, I teach this both in a solid state and a liquid state, and I'll show you what I mean by that in a second. The solid state movement, we're going to anchor the guy's hand across. So again, he was going to try to do the pull down check to us. We're going to match him. We're going to pull his hand down and step in, and we're going to come up and pop him right in the elbow. Now, we're, gonna, we're doing a couple of different things there. Yes, it's a strike. It's also arm bar manipulation, which ties into some of the techniques we've worked previously and, of course, some of the techniques we're going to work down the road. And we're also going to tuck our head down and towards his shoulder. Now, the reason for that is because we're worried about that offhand coming with the strike. So I don't want to stay out here and be in perfect line for that. I want to make sure that I'm tucked in for that technique, and that's also going to let us drive in with the remainder of our strikes. So from here, we pop check his arm down and into his position, and we're going to step through with a knee-elbow combination. Now, we worked that knee-elbow combination on a previous technique on our earlier list, right? From here, boom, landing back. Here, we're going to land forward with it. There, we worked on the outside of the arm. Here, we're going to work on the inside of the arm. There's a lot of that in Kempo, right? And the system I came up with used this knee-elbow combination as a finish for a lot of techniques. Because it's repeated so often throughout the system, in the techniques that I teach, I've changed it to some other finishes in different places, just to introduce different ideas. But there's a ton of places where I can finish a guy with knees and elbows. That's pretty simple striking, right? So that's one of the things we're doing here. Now again, the solid state is all about penetrating through my opponent's position. And that's one of the really important lessons I want students to learn on this. We covered this on the last list with our hidden palm technique where we're running through that guy's position with knee strikes. Well, here we're going to do a very similar thing, and what I want students to really understand, because I see this sometimes, people work this technique, and they hit this guy and they bounce off of it, right? And then they're like, oh, I can't reach him with my elbow. Well, I don't want you to bounce off your opponent, I want you to penetrate through your opponent. So when we do this technique, everything from this check, where we're checking down and into his weak line and into his hip to manipulate his, his posture, and striking through with the knees and the elbows, everything's driving through the opponent. That's a really important part of how we train and teach and practice this technique. So again, the solid state version is all driving through the opponent with these techniques. So we're going to end in a very similar position to hidden palm. These two techniques are very linked, right? The liquid state version can be one of two things, and it's a little bit different. It tends to be a little bit quicker, and we're usually 
pulling off that opponent's arm to move into him. So here, we're kind of pushing his arm away, and the other one, we're going to pull ourselves into our opponent by pulling off his arm. And this can happen one of two ways. It could just be me pulling past him, which I think is an important thing to do. At this point, we'll start talking about the arm drag, C-cupping the elbow so that we can get past our opponent. It might be something as simple as a guy grabs you, you pass his arm, hit the door, you're out the club, you're in your car, you're safe, you're home. That was all the self-defense you needed. If not, if I do have to strike, I may pull myself in to those strikes by using his arm to pull myself into his body, right? It's like a rope, and I'm pulling myself in off of it. We're going to practice this both ways. So we're going to practice really penetrating and pressing through, and we're going to practice pulling ourselves into our opponent. And I want the students to understand both of those. And of course, I talked about volume, right? If it's a level one situation, if it's Ted from accounting, we don't need to knee and elbow and then we have to go see the HR rep and you know, we're in all kinds of trouble with our boss. It may just be anchoring our elbow and extending his arm because if his elbow is anchored and our arm's extended, he has control. If our elbow is anchored and his arm is extended, we have control, right? You wanna have T-Rex arms. You wanna grapple with the torso, not with your limbs, right? So if we anchor like that, we can just press his arm off, and that's one of the things we'll practice. Just using this to escape, right? Sloughing the grab, because that's one of the basic grab escapes we practice. There's a lot of basic grab escapes, and we're going to cover those in some of our techniques when we talk about wrist grabs. Well, hand grabs are similar in that sense. One of those, there's, there's the counter grabs, and there's all these different two-hand escapes, but one is just sloughing. Right? So he's got our hand and we just want to pull it out like this. And in order to do that, we're going to use our off hand to help press his hand away. So it could be something as simple as, okay man, you know, that's, thank you, that's enough. Or we can do the same basic technique with our pummeling strikes. You know, if we have to overwhelm this opponent with strikes, we have to beat him off of us, or maybe he was coming with a weapon, or, you know, maybe this happened in a deeper context than just a handshake gone wrong, right? That's the scenario we teach it off of. That doesn't mean these same basic movements can't be applied in a whole lot of other ways. And that's one of the things we're going to drill. That dishonorable handshake could be a wrist grab, and you can do the same basic technique from that position. So understanding the context of the attack and understanding how we can apply these basic knee and elbow strikes from a lot of different positions, inside and outside the arms, penetrating through the opponent's position, these are all things I want students to get out of this technique. It's not just... Here's what you do if somebody gives you a, a handshake and won't let go. It's understanding all these other lessons. And that basic disarmable handshake is just the context that we use to teach these lessons to beginners. Right? Once they understand that, once they understand the ideal phase of the technique, we can start having all these other conversations. Right? But before they can get to the, to the training, they have to learn the basic movements. And that's a step we can't skip. We have to make sure they do the static training so that they can get to the spontaneous application further down the road. So again, deceptive gift, solid state, strike, check, strike, strike. Right? And we end in the checked position. Liquid state, pulling right into that guy and hitting him. Ends the same way. Right? There's not much of a difference between the two. Once you start practicing it, you see, oh, wow. You know, there's a lot of different manipulations here. There's a lot of subtle differences that can have a big effect in your, your final outcome. But the basic movements are the same. And that's one of the lessons I want people to learn, too, is these same basic movements applied with a different intensity, applied with a little bit different footwork, can have a very big change in how the, the outcome of that scenario works. And that doesn't make one right or the other right. It means that you learn to apply according to context. So that's the first technique I teach on this level, deceptive gift. If you guys have any questions, let me know.